Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Marlene Wagner. I'm the South Coast Policy Lead, and we're here tonight to discuss Philippa Bay Fisheries. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and give it two minutes uh, for, for everybody who wants to be here to join, and then we'll get started. Okay, again, welcome everybody. Uh, this is gonna be our third Willapa Bay North of Falcon meeting. Thank you for joining us. My name's Marlene Wagner again. I'm the South Coast Policy Lead. And I'm gonna start with something that is probably pretty status quo uh, by now, but just in case I'm gonna go ahead and sort of read through our Zoom meeting uh, call logistics and ground rules. Um, so you can turn your camera on and mute or unmute yourself through the control panel at the bottom of your screen. We're going to keep folks muted during the beginning of our program, and then we will unmute folks when we when we open it up for your questions and your feedback. You can unmute yourself on the telephone by pressing star six. Uh, we ask that you use the raise your hand function to ask a question, and you can access this through the control panel at the bottom of the screen. You can also raise your hand by hovering over your face or name on the list of participants and callers can raise their hand by dialing star nine. Please do be respectful of others. Uh, mute your phone or line when you're not talking. Absolutely be tough on issues and questions, but absolutely not on people or organizations. No personal attacks, insults or threats. Make sure you're listening um, and speak and act professionally and allow for a balance of speaking time so that everybody can participate. Uh, we are recording the meeting. Um, and if you have any technical issues during the call, you can use the chat button and, and we'll help you through those. Um, but we'll take your questions and comments live. And so with that, we'll just get started. Um, uh, you can uh, join the meeting via Zoom on this link. And um, we have uh, some revamped uh, uh, proposals to show you, as well as a few new ones. And so I'm going to hand it over now to the technical lead for Willapa Bay, uh, Jody Pope. Thank you. Thanks, Marlene. Thanks, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, last week, we shared with you that we found a calculation error in our modeling work. Uh, that error was that we were modeling for a four bag limit versus a two bag limit. Thus, we have corrected for that error, and I will walk you through the results of that correction. Um, with the limited time that we have here tonight, I will not be walking folks through the specifics of each model since we did last week, but those models are located on our website uh, if you need to take an additional look over them. What I will walk you through tonight is a new proposal, Model F, that we received over the weekend. And then after our presentation here, we're, we're gonna be here to listen to you, uh, get your thoughts on how you'd like to see this fishery package move forward. Um, and also wanted to keep folks, let folks know that we do have limited time to receive additional proposals, but if after tonight, you'd like to submit anything else, we encourage you to do so. Please just keep in mind that we need to get these packaged for the PFMC meeting that will be held on Wednesday. Next slide, please. So this looks very similar to last week. Um, what I'm gonna walk you through are the changes that are in red. And uh, those are what is different from the slash, the slash through. So the numbers that are slashed, what was on the model that we presented last week and the red will be the changes. And that's, that's how we'll proceed uh, on each slide. So for model A, the now, you can see that um, the changes from last week were uh, to reduced 
um, on the Willapa and the Nacelle for the 20% objective for Chinook. Uh, also with Coho, there was a reduction. I'm sorry, the 14,842 was an increase and 37,300 in CHOM was also an increase uh, in Model A. Next slide, please. For model proposal B, you can see the changes in red. It went from 11% and 18.7% to 8.3 and 17% for Chinook. For Coho, we had a difference, a new model run of 14,683 Coho and 36,435 Chum. So a little bit of a difference there. Next slide, please. In model proposal D, you can again see our changes there listed in red. We went from 11.1% and 18.6% for Chinook to 8.5% and 16.9%. For Coho, from 14,022 to 14,708. And from Chum, 36,234 to 36,412. Next slide, please. For model C, you again see the changes in the same location, 10.7 and 18.4 to 8.1, 16.7 for Chinook. For Coho, we had 13,807 with the new model, with the, the new calculation, 14,492 Coho. And previous model was 35,665 Chum the new model, 35,842 chum. Next slide, please. Model E, this was a new model that we received right before um, the, the weekend prior to the meeting last week. Um, and so that you again can see the changes, same location, 8.3% uh, and 6.4% for Chinook previous model. The updated model is 5.6% and a 4.7% for Chinook. 15,013 Coho in the previous model, 15,803 Coho with the updated calculation. 35,435 Chum in the new model, it's 35,612. Next, next slide, please, thank you. Um, and here's our new fishery proposal, Model F. And I will walk you through the, the specifics of this model. So this model meets all management objectives. As a reminder, the objectives are 20% for Chinook, 13,600 for Coho, and 35,400 for Chum. As you can see in those values above, they all meet that management objective. This proposal allows for 29 days of fishing. It allows for tangle net in weeks 34 through 38 in the areas listed there on the slide. And it allows for a small mesh weeks 39 through 48 in uh, a variety of different areas there. Um, and they're circled on the uh, map that you can see. So the different areas highlight where that, that fishing would occur. The, um, the sport marine and freshwater, there is no change from the NALF model. So from that model A that you saw, there's no change. Next slide, please. We did also receive some additional fishery proposals that we wanted to share with you folks tonight. Uh, one was no commercial or recreational salmon fishing in 2021, so nobody goes fishing. And the second one was to open North Bear, Palix Rivers, and Smith Creek to salmon catch and release fishing in 2021. So things that are on the table to discuss this evening with you folks. Next slide, please. Uh, there's a lot on these next two slides that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you, um, and folks should have received this in your email and or uh, it, it is also available on our website. But essentially on this slide, what this is, what this is sh sharing with you is that it breaks out each proposal into individual pieces, and then it visually allows you to see the differences amongst each model. So if we look at just the first one, for example, uh, model A, the NALF run. It shares the management objectives, which are the same across all of the model proposals. It walks you through the expected natural Chinook impact rate for Chinook and Chum. 
It provides the expected escapement. It provides the total bay expected harvest for Chinook and Coho. And it separates that by recreational and commercial sector. And then it also provides you a percentage um, uh, of allocation by sector. So what, uh, what each uh, sector may, may get uh, during their, if, if one of these proposals was selected. Uh, in the bottom of this slide, it kind of walks you through as a reminder what each model was. And again, folks should have had this um, um, in their email box or it is also available on our website if, if you wanna spend some more time looking through this. Next slide, please. Again, this is another one with a lot of information on it, um, but this one again walks you through each model proposal and describes what the fishery would look like for each sector, including the X vessel value for the commercial sector. So for example, uh, model A, um, it walks you through the fishery. So whether it's marine rec, freshwater rec, or commercial, it provides what the daily limit would look like, uh, what the Chinook fishery, mark selective fishery, what would be required to be released or retained, um, the natural coho limit, hatchery coho limit, what's going on with chum uh, in that fishery description, and then the commercial ex vessel value. And so this is another good um, opportunity for folks to kind of piece together what each model uh, has, has for their fishery and what that might look like and how you could shape it. The bottom of this slide just, again, similar to the last slide, kind of walks folks through what each uh, slide uh, really is, what the proposal is for each one of those slides. Next slide, please. And with that, that's all we had to share with you tonight, the uh, corrected models, the new model that we received, uh, additional fishery proposals. And at this time, we'd just like to listen to you and hear your feedback and your thoughts. So good every evening, everybody, uh, Mark Baltzell. Um, I am here to kind of uh, help facilitate questions tonight. So just remember if you're on the phone, uh, it is star nine to raise your hand, uh, star six to unmute yourself. So the first person with their hand up tonight is a 360 number ending in 445. Uh, go right ahead. Hello. Go right ahead. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, uh, I've, got a, I've got several things I wanna talk about. Uh, I'm gonna go through them quickly. So if there's any commentary from your staff, uh, I would like that afterwards. Uh, first, uh, need to implement the short-term jig head prohibition, August 1st to October 16th on Nacelle. Uh, that section of the Nacelle River from Highway 4 Bridge to the hatchery must remain closed until October 16th. Egg take has not been made the last two years. An early opener is ludicrous, float rule or not. The early coho are not are non-biters when they are moving on a freshet. Those who know Chinook and Willapa Bay realize a later arriving Chinook by just two weeks could eliminate ick and other issues related to low flows and warm water. Hatchery staff is working to make this happen. To achieve this, surpluses are needed. Keep it closed. Additionally, the proposed three fish bag, one female for the NEMA is not manageable. If they want a three fish bag, give it to them. Hell, make it six adults. Maybe then they'll understand why it's not, why they're not making egg cake. With that said, I support a two fish bag with no natural coho harvest bay wide, increase hatchery retention by emergency rule if known surpluses occur. Please consider using surplus Chinook to supplement the reduced natural spawning cohort and prohibit retention of any Chinook above the hatchery. That section opens October 16th. The vast majority of Chinook are not food quality and are only being retained for eggs by fishermen. And the proposal that uh, 
Jody just read uh, to to uh, have a catch and release on several streams. I do not support that. Hooking mortality, there'd be dead fish. Why? I, that makes no sense. So <clears throat> lastly, uh, to James, Jody, and Marlene, you're new to the Bay Management Team. I would hope you will scrutinize and assess comments, recommendations, and season proposals based on what is best for the resource and established by the commission. Thank you. If I'll, I'll take questions if you have them. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate your thoughts. Looks like uh, John is next. Go ahead, John. You'll need to unmute yourself, John. Um, not sure what device you're on, John, but uh, you're not coming through on our end. If you want to try muting or unmuting yourself or logging back out and logging back in again. Greg has his hand up. Go ahead, Greg. If you're unmuted, Greg, we can't hear you. Hopefully it's nothing on our end, Leah. I was just checking and it doesn't look like it is on our end. Um, just a reminder, oh, there he just unmuted. It looks like it's unmuted on our end now. Greg, if you wanna try. If you're on a cell phone. Um, we heard you there, Greg, for a second. Oh, no, you hear me now? We do. Well, we did for a second. So uh, Dale post a, a comment in the chat about the bottom of the screen does not allow video or audio. Uh, I believe uh, when I say that uh, if you raise your hand, we'll enable that. And yeah, Leah just typed that in, so. Um, So, Steve, I see your hand is up. I'm not sure if that's uh, still up or uh, if you had something else you wanted to add. I I did not raise my hand, uh, so I have no, nothing further to add at this point. Thank you for the response, Steve. Lance has his hand up. Go ahead, Lance. I just want to see if it would work or not. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, good to Apparently know it's it not on our end. <laughs> Apparently it works. Um, no, so um, I just would like to say I support F. Um, the Fish Commission asked us to run a fishery at 20%. That gets all of the boxes green. We're obviously a long ways under that on the north end of the bay, but there doesn't seem to be a way for us to get um, anywhere close to the 20%. I think it was at 9% or something. So quite a bit of savings there. Um, 
I also feel like we shouldn't fish natural coho until we see what we have. Um, once we get to a point where we, we can update that and hopefully we have a better run than what we predicted, uh, I, th I think then we can open up some areas and stuff. I, I think we've, I guess what I'm saying is I think we need to get back to a, an in-season management type of thing. A season, the season that we set right now will not be the season that we fish. It never has been. There's not much point in arguing about how many days the commercials get or how many days this person gets. It's the season runs on, on what we catch in our fishery. So, you know, we, we can put up as many models as we want, but we've never hit the amount of seed days we put in the model. So I don't see much point in, in fighting about that. Um, so I, I would just like to ask that, and I know that Marlene and Jody and everybody, and this is a tough time that, that we try to do something in season um, better than we have done. We've been working on it, we've been trying, but that's what I would like to suggest that we be ready when the commercial fishery starts fishing and, and we can kind of get a handle on what we have to open areas up that we may be able to open. And until then, I don't know that we can, but thank you. Appreciate your thoughts, Lance. Uh, next up is uh, Tim. Go ahead, Tim. Can you hear me? We can, welcome. Thank you. Um, I want to uh, uh, give a different impression in Lansted of what the policy says and what the commission did. Uh, I've gone through that whole thing and uh, I disagree that they asked to run the fisheries at 20%. I don't doubt that you will, but that's not what they said. They said up to. And it was constantly concern amongst a lot of the commissioners about what that meant. So uh, I want to straighten that out. The other thing is, is that we talked about having a bonus this year, a harvest bonus is the way we talked about it, where the folks up north would get off some of our fish so we could get more of them down here to help with our problem in restoring natural spawners. And when we went down and addressed the Pacific Salmon Commission, oh, I guess it was five years ago, we raised the fact repeatedly that we, they weren't giving us escapement goal across the bar. And one of the issues we had to deal with was the fact that if they got off them up north, that this department would kill them and take every one of them and not a single one would get to the gravel. And I couldn't hardly challenge that and because that's what the department has always done. And that's what you're doing again. Uh, if we have an issue over prior intercept, we want cooperation of those upstream from us. The worst thing you could do, the stupidest public relations political move you could do is to wipe them out. That doesn't make any sense. The other thing I would tell you is that I'm glad that Ross modeled, asked for the Model E. It shows you where we're headed. It shows you what we're going to face in the future uh, if we don't stop now and use those bonus fish to do what we can. Uh, we're going to get down to where there is no fisheries. So the short-sightedness of it, this is try to get me a little more fish this year for my polar net. And the long side of it is you'll do more damage and you'll eventually lose both. We're on a critical mass. So what I'm going to suggest is that however you set these seasons, whatever you do, it is unacceptable to take our largest natural origin spawning Chinook stream and set it at 19.9. It's unacceptable at 18.7. It's unacceptable at 17.4. We don't manage to harvest rate. We manage to the purpose of the policy which is to restore natural origin spawners and avoid ESA. So my suggestion to you is to pay attention and turn all eyes on the cell. Uh, if you can leave this alone where we have a chance to get our above escapement goal in uh, the north, that, that is great. We need those fish for blend stock so we can increase hatchery 
uh, uh, output. But when you intentionally move forward with a plan that will eliminate, it will only deliver 30, approximately 30% 30 of your escapement goal in our largest natural spawning escapement goal stream, that on paper is nearly obscene. So I'm gonna ask you to set another goal and don't pay attention to the percentages, pay attention to how many fish we get back. Give me 75% of the fish coming across the bow or across the, uh, the bar, at least 75% of them. If we can't get 75%, we can't get to 40 or 45% of the escapement goal. Uh, I think that we all ought to be horse whipped. It's that simple. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Looks like Warren has his hand up next. Go ahead, Warren. Looks like you're gonna need to unmute yourself on your end, Warren. Still nothing from Warren. Remember, if you're on a phone, uh, star six to mute and unmute yourself. Well, we'll try to come back to Warren in a minute. I have a 360 number ending in 932. Go ahead. Now, this is Ross. Can you hear me? I can, Ross. Welcome. And thank you. Um, the only option that I can see that moves in the, uh, this is, once again, it's an escapement free discussion. Uh, I came in about 10 minutes to six and saw that we had a new model we hadn't seen before. I, I object to that. Uh, it's not the way to treat the public. It's not the way to treat the resource. Uh, since we're not talking about a statement, I have no clue whether F gets more or wild fish into the nasal or not. Uh, we heard that we're trying to uh, uh, shift the nasal run to later. Uh, did not know that. Uh, but if we are, then the one on earth is worried about these early fish that no one wants, that are going to die anyway, blah, blah. What, what are we so worried about that? For anyway, uh, doesn't doesn't make sense to me. It is a recreational priority, uh, and we also heard a proposal to close uh, above the uh, uh, we are uh, above the dam in the, the, the nasal. That's just in keeping with the move. That every every year we close more recreational uh, fishing, even uh, on hatchery fish. Um, I would. Uh, my proposal B uh, is still not being characterized right. I, we did make for people's for people's information. We did make Chinook egg take in the name of last year, and uh, we need to do that. That's the most productive river that, that we have right now, and we don't need to back off of that and see how the other rivers work out someday. So uh, it's important that we not, uh, if we want to keep the limit at two. Uh, I wouldn't specify hens. Uh, it's uh, obvious from your forecast. If it resembles the truth with, with the number of up coming back, that the limit of three would be fine in the name of, uh, but I would limit it to one hen because uh, uh, we need to make egg take and we need to do that for the recreational fishermen. and we need to do that for the orcas. I would point out that in, the, in our, what's left of our recreational priority, 63% of the recreational fish land, Chinook landed, 63% are in the Neiman. So it, it's not time to be cutting back on that. I read the new hatchery policy. It uh, makes it clear that there's one river that meets the intent of not messing up a wild Chinook run, and that's the Neiman. And so uh, it's really our last best chance to have a, a recreational priority that means anything. As far as option F goes, this is a rerun of two years ago when we came into the meeting. 
three or four options that you haven't seen before. They're all supplied by the commercials, and we don't have time to talk about anything else. And so I've not seen F, uh, cannot support it. And uh, I think that E or a modification of E that preserves the recreational priority and bumps up to an escapement at the same time over the other options would be the only acceptable one. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. So uh, I see uh, Warren is still there. Warren, I'm going to ask you to unmute again and see if you can get yourself unmuted. Okay, moving down the list, Greg. Let's go ahead and try again. All right, how about now? We got you, Greg. Welcome. Good, good, good. Sorry about that earlier. No worries. Um, uh, I want to throw my support behind F. Um, uh, the, the commission did say, you know, we're going to harvest up to 20%. Uh, we're, we're getting savings out of the ocean now. So uh, uh, I think we need to, we need to uh, do what they said. You know, we modeled something to, uh, got modeled to 20%. All the boxes are green. That means a go in the model world. So uh, that's what we're running this fishery by as a model. So the commercial fishery gets shut down, can get shut down daily if it has to. We all know that. We've all been there and done this. And uh, that's the way it goes. So I feel like that's the way we need to run the fishery. And uh, about, you know, some earlier comments about, you know, we're, we're falling off a cliff here. I thought it was established at the commission meeting that we were on an upward trajectory. Might not have been, but, but uh, I thought Commissioner McIsaac, when in his pr presentation, stated that we are on an upward trend. So why would we, you know, gut it this year? Let's, uh, let's, let's keep with what we're doing and uh, let's create a fishery for everybody not just uh, not just for one user group. And as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to uh, priorities, um, as it was been stated, is there is nothing in that policy that says what a priority means. We've been fighting over this for years. So uh, it seems like to me, the state has uh, uh, said that uh, their priority means they get to catch more fish. So in my book, that means they get 50.1%. And that's a priority. So, uh, I mean, I think going and th saying that they need 90% or 80% is not true. Uh, they've already, the, the sport fishery has already got a priority in time and area. Uh, so um, as far as I'm concerned, if you're gonna consider priority as being a fish then they get one more fish, you know, if, if that's what we're talking about here, you know, nobody wants to, Nobody wants to answer that question. So uh, uh, that's that's the way I see it in there. So um, if they get one more fish in the commercials, they got priority as far as I'm concerned. So uh, I just get tired of the same argument of, you know, uh, the same the same thing. It, it, it's uh, it's only it's only conservation when the commercial fishery is gone, you know, uh, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, so anyway. As long as all the boxes are green and, and F shows green, we'll go with F. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. So I saw John's hand going up and down. John, did you have uh, something you wanted to say? Yeah, can you hear me? I can, John. Welcome. Good. Thank you. Yeah, it was my my first time uh, to uh, comment. I'm I'm a uh, recreational bank fisherman uh, on the nacelle, pretty much only, and uh, I think I can speak for all the people that uh, I know of that have been fishing on the nacelle, bank fishing for the last 35, 40 years. That uh, we like option E. Um, not not sure when that came about, who proposed it, but um, 
that sounds sounds very good to us as um, to um, I guess make the time a little later in the year for the gill netters to uh, get into that area of the nacelle and to allow us to fish above the Highway 4 bridge. Um, lots of fish sitting in there uh, for a long period of time, last summer, fall, early fall. Um, and uh, no, no way to fish for them. So um, yeah, that, that's an option we appreciate. I'm not, I would appreciate knowing who proposed that. I don't know, I don't have that background or involvement in it, but uh, that sounds like a really good one to us. Thank you. Thank you, John. Tim has his hand up, go ahead, Tim. You hear me? We do. Okay. I want to shift from Chinook to Coho and Chum. Um, we often have, when we have problems with uh, reaching escapement goals, which we have historically with Coho as an example down there, you'll have a buffer zone put in, like say in the Columbia, sometimes it's 30% you reduce the run size. You just don't go out and fish. These proposals, with the exception of E, all show as an example under option F, I do believe that the escapement goal for, uh, which is, is aggregate bay wide, the goal is 13,600, 13, and this is predicting 13,965. You're fishing to the last fish right out of the gate. That's a disaster. We've done that before, and the department has failed to move fast enough to stop it from undermining the escapement goal. We predict you will do it again. Same thing, similar with the under F as an example. You got a, a goal, I believe, of uh, 35,400, and we're sitting here with escapement at 36,332. You're within hundreds. A couple hundred fish, a couple hundred fish. And meantime, you're at 30% of the escapement goal for Chinook. You put those numbers into place and ask yourself whether that is a responsible way of managing fisheries when all of the statute, federal, state, and the policy, by the way, as is currently written, says you'll restore and maintain natural origin. And that this none of this rises to that definition in any fashion whatsoever. Unfortunately, even E can't get us there without pain. It's unbelievable. Why? Because of what this department did over the last eight years and its previous history. The policy was supposed to correct the way. It didn't. Intentionally, knowingly, and willingly you guys hammered that bay. And all I can tell you is when you focus on Chinook, we've got a problem here. And do not overlook the fact of how many years, out of how many years, you've blown escapement goal on Coho. Coho is a sleeper. Coho is going to bite you in the butt. So Whatever you do, think beyond this season, how many fish I can put in the ice box this year or in a tote this year. Someone's supposed to be having a long game here on how we don't end up with zero fishing. And that someone is morally and responsible for this thing professionally is the staff at Region 6. And you, Mark, you, Mark, Show us where you can go home and feel comfortable. You're not going to harm us again. And the only way you can do that is to back this thing off. You can either back it off now or you can lose the whole damn thing in the future. Thank you. 
Thanks, Tim. Uh, let's see. Next in line is a 360 number ending in 793. Go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. This is Andy. Hi, Andy. So in regards to those, la those last remarks, everybody's entitled to an opinion. So he, he's right. 100% right. If nobody fishes, maybe we make a statement. And that's on the table. Nobody wants to bring that model up. But nobody, if we don't fish, maybe we make a statement. Okay. Whether it's region six, region five, four, three, two, or one, fishery science, there's nothing exact in fishery science. So you have to use your best available science and you have to use the guidance from the commission. The guidance from the commission is 20%. Priority to Chinook or priority to Coho, we're trying to craft the best fishery for both user groups. Okay, F checks all the boxes. It's loaded, if you, if you look at it correctly, it's loaded up the front because we don't have any coho. If there were more coho to catch, the model might have shown more days in September, but it doesn't. That's your limiting factor this year. Okay, and as for people to be offended that there was a model proposed, anybody could propose have proposed a model. Okay, it was it's not a secret deal. So these people that keep complaining that oh. I didn't get to do it. All you got to do is a public website. It says Willapod, WDFW. For the last two meetings, your staff has said, we will consider any models. We would love to see more models. Okay, if nobody wanted to put one in, that's, that's on them. Okay, if they don't like the models that are there, that's okay. But once again, Model F checks all the boxes. I do believe it's been said that in Willapa, we have a world-class monitoring system. You know our catch, if we're done at six, you know 90% of our catch by eight o'clock, nine o'clock, okay? If we, if we catch too many, we, we know we're gonna get shut down. We accept that, okay? We're fine with that. That's called in-season management. If there's a few more fish to catch like last year, maybe expand the recreational bag limit. But to sit there and hold Region 6 accountable to say we want 100% exact science, I don't think that's rational. One more thing, the recreational fishery with a two fish natural bag limit prior to September 1st, I would caution that since the entire coast, I do believe, is fishing marked selective for coho. Some of these, some of these fisheries are leaving a lot of fish on the table for two, three, four, five natural fish. So prior to September 1st, I would caution that because what you might see, and this was brought up earlier, if there was a no fishery in the ocean, your, uh, the shift in effort, maybe the shift in effort, if those natural fish do happen to dip in that are not local, your shift in effort could be pretty high. That's all for now, thanks. Thanks, Andy. Next in the queue, we have a 360 number ending in 445. Go ahead. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, I, I just got a comment on this uh, previous commenter about coho escapement goal having historical problems. The historical problem began in 2015 when a number of the people that are speaking about this issue demanded a four fish bag on wild coho in the bay and the tributaries 2015 and 2016. 2017 ocean conditions went bad and that's why we're where we're at. Prior to 2015, go back 10 years. I've looked at the escapement reports. The nacelle made escapement by two to three times 
before this policy went into effect. That river will recover by itself if we quit harvesting wild coho. We need to stop that. It's, it's just a simple fact. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, looks like Lance is up next. Go ahead, Lance. Okay, I'm back. A couple of comments. Um, I guess you can hear me. I don't see you we waving. But, um, so when we look back on our past success rate of where we've been um, looking at these models that the state has to come up with and try to run, which is an almost impossibility. So we can look back on our track record, 2015, 2016 were the two years we went over. We had a four fish bag limit. We fished way out into the ocean. Since then, we've done very good at never hitting 20% or 14%. Last year, we were at 11.4. So all this excitement about, oh, they're modeling it to 20%. We didn't hit 14% last year. We didn't hit 20% the year before. We didn't hit 20% the year before that. So it's like I said earlier, we get this fight going about, oh my God, that 20% is down here. That's 20% of the natural fish. We're leaving 80% behind. That is the conservation part of it. We always seem to forget that. And I, I just, I love when we look at model E, why didn't we, we've had this fight for several years now. We need alternative gears. Model E, we absolutely don't want more, any alternative gear. Tangle net is scratched. October on fishery. I mean, come on. You wonder why we don't get along with each other when we put stuff out there. I mean, it's like Andy said, why are, why are we so conservation minded but yet we never come together and say no fishing for anyone. I think Tim, you, you've scratched on it a little bit. You keep saying we shouldn't be harvesting any of these fish, but step out there and say, we should have no wreck fishery. We should have no commercial fishery if that's what you mean. But I feel like all we're doing is sitting here saying we want a robust seven day a week commercial our wreck fishery and no commercial fishery. Well, we'll never get along with that. How are we supposed to ever have an advisory group that's going to get along when you, you continuously cut one fishery completely out of the bay? So I, I've never sat here and said, we don't want a wreck fishery. We want every fish for us. I, I'm happy. I'm a wreck fisherman too. Go at it. But somewhere we've got to come to some common ground where we say, we're going to have a commercial fishery. That's what the policy says. We keep jacking this policy and saying, oh my God, policy says this. Well, the policy in the first two lines says, you shall conserve and you shall have a recreational and a viable commercial fishery. We don't have a viable commercial fishery. This thing's got to change from where it is for us to survive. That's what the policy says. So at some point, we've got to stop being children and stop fighting over something the state can't control. And that's this model that we're fighting about today. It, it makes no sense. All we do is go fishing. We see what we caught. Then we adjust the days that we fish. You know, the, the wreck fishery has been closed down in past years because we didn't have enough fish for it. That is life. We deal with that every year. But to try to sit here in April and figure out how many fish we got and fight over this and use this and use that, it, it's getting tiring. I can't imagine you guys haven't gotten tired of this already. I mean, it, it's just so ridiculous. I'm done. Thank you, Lance. So just want to remind folks, uh, we've scheduled an hour for comments tonight. Uh, so we've got about 10 minutes left in our scheduled time together. Uh, a number of us do have a, a meeting following this to talk about Grace Harbor issues. Um, uh, so please join us for that one uh, uh, after our meeting here. Uh, looks like Tim has his hand up. Go ahead, Tim. 
Well, I thought I was done, <laughs> but um, we have a, a belief in the group that I work with called the Advocacy, where we refuse to comment on allocation disputes. A dead fish is a dead fish, whether you kill it with a pole or you kill it with a net. We formed because we believed that the children in the future and the resource were not being adequately represented. So we try to stay out of that. I don't fish with a pole or a net, uh, though I would like to, got a boat, but it's parked. You've got a situation here where you have license holders. Some have a C on it and they can sell it. Some have an R on it and they have to keep it for personal possession. When you go in and talk about allocation, I'd look to see how many license holders there are that fish commercially and what is their take and what is how many fish fish recreationally. Okay. I know it's outside the box, but is one a second class citizen over the other? And the other problem that I run into here with all of this is when you start talking 50.1% means a priority or whatever, uh, whatever you want to set to figure out, however you want to define it. We kept asking the department for definitions of this and it department in, absolutely refused to insert it up to this day, they won't. And at the end of the day, remember that we're now to the point where over 60% of the recreational harvest of Chinook in that whole basin is coming down in a very narrow stream called the Nema that you could pull vault across at the lower end. You've eliminated already almost all of the commercial fishing or the recreational fishing for Chinook. Uh, yeah, they can come out and they can drive around and take eight, nine days and maybe get a bite. But that's not really fishing. And this has to focus on by statute, federal, state, by the policy. The policy says in the first beginning, the purpose is to restore natural spawners and avoid ESA. That's what it says. And the commission, I will argue, and I'll go back to them and I'll ask them again. The commission this year did not say fish to 20%. It's set up to. You can go from two, one, but you can't go over 20. It's your call. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Lance is up next. Okay, here we go again. And I, I know you know this I'm not, I know I'm not supposed to address Tim, and I know we're supposed to be in good standing on here, but I hold a license. I don't bring any of these fish home and put them in my free, freezer and eat them. I bring them home and sell them. I bring them to the dock and sell them to a cannery, to a fish buyer. So, and I know you know that, and I know that, that what you say is just another reason for us to fight. Uh, you know that the, that the commercial fishery is providing a fish to those people that don't have the ability or the need, the money or whatever it is to go recreational fishing. And I, it, it's so silly for us to sit and argue about it. I mean, it's very simple. Those people in the state of Washington that hold a recreational license represent the recreational fishermen. Those people that don't, are represented by the commercial fishery. Now, some of them may not eat fish. I, I will agree with that. But for us to start an argument as to how many people are harvesting, it's how many people are eating those fish. I mean, it, it's once again getting back to an argument just to have an argument. That's why our advisory group doesn't get anywhere. That's why, you know, when we get through this COVID, are we even going to have an advisory group? And I, I just, I can't imagine that you're not tired of this fight. You know, I mean, every little thing that's said becomes a fight. I, I don't, I don't know if people 
thrive on fights or what it is, but let's, let's just move on and try to figure out how we can have both fisheries. When it comes to what you said about the north end of the bay not catching fish, you're correct, Tim. But recall what I said. When you swing this stick, it's going to come back around and hit you in the back of the head. That's where we are. We, we cut production in the north end of the bay. I'm not in favor of that. Never was in favor of it. But it's what we wanted to do with the policy. And it didn't work. It's now gutted the sport fishery. I'm 100% in belief that you're right. I, I looked at the numbers. It's terrible. So how do we fix that? And it, it's no different than Francis said. We raise more fish in the north end of the bay. That's how we fix it. But that's not what the policy says. So you can't beat the drum that says, follow the policy to the letter of the law and then change everything in it that works for the wreck fishery. Somehow we have to sit down, make a policy, make something that works for both of us, raise fish that all of us can use and move on with life before it's all gone. And I'll end on that. Thank you. Appreciate everybody's passion. I guess I would just remind everybody, uh, please direct your questions and comments towards uh, the department and the issues and, and not at each other. Appreciate that. Andy, go ahead. Yeah, you got me? We got you, Andy. Um, yeah, no, I just say same comment. It's, it's a limited entry fishery. So he, you're right. There's going to be more wreck fishermen. I, there's a reason for that. Okay. That's so we can be managed. Okay. If you had the same amount of recreational licenses, commercial licenses, it would be really tough to manage the fishery. Okay. So we're supplying food to 99% of the population I would, of Washington and anybody else that wants to buy it. Okay. Whatever mall do you go with? Okay. And I'm sure that maybe there is another meeting or we'll have another discussion about the models. It's, he's right. We can go up to 20%. But in your model, you've got us modeled for tangle nets in the daytime using the same numbers that was conventional nets in the dark. It, it, it's apples and oranges. So if you move, you know, I, I would, I would, I'm all in for F because I don't think you're even going to come close to your 20%. Just like we haven't come close to our 20% yet, but let's model it that way because with their world-class monitoring system, okay, it's pretty easy to take a day away. We're not going five days a week. Okay. We, we, we you know, three days a week fish every other day you've got chance to analyze the numbers and if they're too big you know you got you got room for air to take them away and that's all i got for the rest of the night and hey so just real quick can we stay on this for the grays harbor meeting or do we have to dial back in i believe we have to dial back in andy i believe it's a separate meeting it's a, link but it is is it the same number uh, I don't think so, Leah. I'm looking to you for answering, answering Andy's question. It is the same phone number. You're just going to have to type in the different webinar code that you got when you registered. Yeah, I didn't register for the Grays Harbor one because I couldn't find the number. So, okay, I'll figure it out. Thanks everybody for your time tonight. Uh, really appreciate everybody's comments and, and uh, we'll be in touch uh, as we move through the rest of the week and, and get to a final fishing package. Uh, again, appreciate everybody's time and have a great night.